Hey, Mook. Hi. What's up? Not much. It's been a while. Where you been? Busy. Busy. Cleaning, <laughs> moving, getting ready to move houses. This week is finally the week. It's going to happen. With that being said, we need a video this week, and we need to knock something out quick. And we have just the thing right here. And this scrap pile is today's video. Let's go check it out. So, we are on a property south of town that a guy lived on forever and just collected crap. It's already half cleaned up, basically. Our realtor bought this place to clean it up and flip it, but before he scraps the place, he called me and said, Hey, Kevin, you should probably come walk around and see if there's anything out here you want. Well, we did, and there is. No, it's not the school bus. No, it's not the panel van way over there. No, it's not any of this. <laughs> it's that. Right there. Ah. What? <laughs> Let's go around the other side and see what it is. Oh, a knife! Right. <laughs> Great. Get these out of the way for ya. It's not the best knife and this is really green. It's broken. <laughs> Good job, Moose. All right, do you see it? Is it that? It's that. A Vibo. Don't ask what that means because I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, we got a whole collection of just junk here. Uh, tillers, which I'm assuming are severely seized because they've been outside for a million years. Oh, son of a gun. That one spins. We've got a gravelly lawnmower, a uh, golf cart, and what we're here for today, this red uh, yard cart thingy. As you can see, it's completely buried in a scrap pile, so we're going to have to wait for David to get here and then uh, get the skid loader out and dig that thing out. Unless yes. you can do it with your knife. <laughs> look, look what I just found. Whoa! That's a pine cone from the... Uh, California! Yeah. What's that doing out here? Hello, sir. Oh, hi. Everyone, this is David. David Whitaker's Marketing. Uh, you do auctions and stuff on farms around here, right? We sure do. And more importantly, you have a podcast, right? We do. Farm for Profit podcast and how to be profitable with farming. Is it farm for profit or farm for fun? Uh, both. It's uh, oh, two. two. So every other week we do uh, farm for profit where we tell you something educational and then the other week we just drink beer and talk about farming and that's called farm for fun. I think that's the one they're going to be interested <laughs> in. Yeah. That one's cool. So, what do you think our best approach here is? I don't know. I actually <laughs> think I come in from this side. I'll move this first. I can just take it off piece by piece, and I'll start making a pile over there. Gotcha. Um, yeah, however, that, that trailer might be the only yeah. problem. Let me take that trailer off of there, and let me take this rack off of here. Here's the seat, Mook. Put that down. <laughs> no, you got to hang on to that. We need that. I hate it. Mook! A toilet! Do you have to go? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please set it on. Oh. <laughs> Calamity. Oh, there we go. Now before anyone gets mad about, yeah, you could have got $15 for that on Facebook Marketplace. Listen, this place is full of trash. <laughs> like, there's shit everywhere. No one has time for this. It's gonna be five degrees tomorrow. We're just, it's just trying to get this property cleaned up and moved, so. It's already snowing. There is some stuff like this fleet side bed that will be not, it'll be saved, don't worry. I think I'll take that, that uh, gas tank off the top, the gas tank uh, A-frame. Okay. And then we can. Slip it out of if there. If you want to make it look any kind of dramatic, you <laughs> can uh, pull that off of there with a tow rope or something and crane it out of there. I think you. We just forked under Yeah, it. I think you just forked under I just don't it. want to be... As long as we don't smash the front end, that's all I care about. All right. That's okay, I'm sure. Oh, you know what? It's fiberglass, so. Oh, God. I, I was, was just trying to get that wheel on there so I could fork under it nice. <laughs> oh, I thought I'm it was, so sorry. I thought it was metal. Dude, I don't care. This, we're pulling this from a scrap pile. Oh, my God. 
I mean, to be fair, we'd probably drive that thing and immediately hit a stump or yeah. something and just <laughs> explode it. So. Here's your lawnmower. Get out of yeah, here. Change of plans. We're getting a lawnmower. Hey, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fit on the trailer, so now we have to drive it home. You think it'll drive home? <laughs> driving that home is like the equivalent of 500 miles in a car. Right there. Yeah, 5,000. Especially when it's like you know 25 degrees out and snowy. Hey, I'm seeing a belt drive rear axle. So if nothing else, that's gonna be nice to have. Looks like it even has a transmission. This might be go kart parts right here, Moot. Holy cow. But we'll still see if we can make it run for today. Bonk. That's, looks like we got an amp meter gauge and three switches and a knob. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's fixed. Oh man, she's cherry. Well, let's see if it fits on the trailer because right. I, I didn't think it'd be this long. <laughs> I didn't think it would either. Fuck! Fuck! No. Oh, baby. That was close. I don't even need straps. <laughs> Alright. Let's take this piece of thing back, <laughs> back to the shop and see if it runs. Do you know what Vivo well, is? I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard of this. I've never seen We need an these. acronym for this. Very important, I don't know. <laughs> in my head, I said very icky body odor, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, you guys in the comments, what's Vivo stand for? What's Vivo? <laughs> so, like I said, some of these things out here, most, like 95% of everything out here is just junk because it's been sitting outside for 40 years and it's junk. However, there are things on farms like this that get sold off regularly on your website. There are, yeah. So, we're iowalandguy.com, but also iowaauctions.com, pretty easy name to remember. We do that, uh, farmers call us all the time, and we'll be out and uh, they, what they perceive as junk, a lot of times they want to sell the real estate, but then there's that gem, like uh, on this place we found a Maytag motor. Yep. That was a, a old kickstart single cylinder Maytag motor. I mean, that's that's those are the gems that you find. There's a couple safes. I want to break them open, see what's in the safe. But uh, you wouldn't know. You never know who's interested in buying stuff uh, until you just put it out there on the website. Like this Vibo. Yeah. So if you guys are in Iowa or even near it, and you want to know another website for farm auctions, Whitaker Market Group's the company, and it's IowaAuctions.com. There you go. Yep. Let's get the old Vibo back to the shop. And... I, I don't know if we can say this, but I, I would call it bitch operated here. So <laughs> <laughs> very intelligent bitch operating this is what it is. There's there's my ad to your comment section. <laughs> I think this light right here is the light when like the mirror when he's uh, on Dumb and Dumber is like still going to Aspen if you'd like to come. <laughs> you know what he is doing. <laughs> still going to Aspen if you want to make a ride Wait, in the Vibo. They don't even match. No, they don't. All right, let's get out of the cold and get this thing back to the shop. All righty, it's been a day. We got the Vibo back at the shop. Yesterday on the way home, we had a surprise ice storm that was not forecasted. So we called that a day and just went home, uh, had a beer, and sat on the couch, fell asleep, took a day off for New Year's Eve. It was, uh, it was really nice. We needed that. Either way, it is now the very first day of 2022, and what better way to start than that? <laughs> Outside, it is a beautiful three degrees. Feels like negative 18. So, you know, another typical Iowa day. I haven't really looked over this thing at all. So let's go ahead and do that together for the first time. Looks like we got a battery tray. So this must be the electric start to some extent. Also looks like this thing is totally homemade. Like look at, look at these welds, just little bits of metal just slathered in wherever the hell they fit for spacers and whatnot. Did some Googling, have no idea what Vibo is. Oh, wait, hang on. There's more here I didn't see. I need a rag. What did you say? Oh, oh ho! Des Moines, Iowa. So this is some, probably not homemade, but some local made thing. Steering wheel is completely froze. That doesn't move at all. This is probably a gear selector. I don't know, let's, let's get this back cleaned out and get this guy up and see what we got going on under here. Ah, 
Yes, right on the floor. All right, here's what we got. We got ourselves a motor. Oh, it's Wisconsin. Well, that's good. That means it'll probably fire right up. <laughs> Heavy duty air cooled Wisconsin engine. Looks to be a model TRA 10D. The size is a 3 and 1 8 by 2 and 7 8. It's just kind of chilling here. Looks like one of our braces underneath got bent up. Uh, we do have a brake. That must be where the pedal is. It's on this guy right here. This looks like it might be a golf cart axle, maybe. I, I'm, I'm betting this is a golf cart axle and motor out of the 60s or something. But I think we could just focus on making this thing run, which, as you can see, it does turn over, which is really good. So yeah, let's put some voltage to this starter generator and see what happens. Before we turn anything over, actually, I'm gonna pull this plug out and get some oil in that cylinder, because there's no point in just scraping those rings dry after they've probably been sitting all of 30 years, if I had to guess. It's honestly a miracle it spins over, which maybe it hasn't been that long. I have absolutely no way to tell. Oh, that was actually incredible. Very, very, very rich and covered in carbon, but that probably kept the motor alive. Kept it all nice and moist in there with the oil. By holding, holding oil in the carbon. Ah, do it. Let that soak. We get a battery. Let's see if this thing does any sort of spinning. Oh. It tried. It tried ever so slightly. <laughs> I love starter generators, they're so cool. Yeah, they make they make no noise, they just sit there and spin. Let's see if our magneto's lost charge. There's a really good chance. But you know, hopefully not. I don't see a lot of nothing going on, but at the same time, that might be because there's a key off somewhere. Let's turn our ignition to potentially on. I believe that to be a valve you're seeing. Still no ignition. Um, these are probably old enough to have points, aren't they? You know what? We're like three bolts away from just pulling this whole thing out and working on it on a bench. Okay, that should be everything. That was just two bolts and a couple wires. That's a lot of cast iron. All right, motor's out. Let's figure out what this thing's doing, why we don't have spark. Let's see if we can make it run. I'm going to assume, I haven't worked on many of these Wisconsin, I know the colors pretty well. I'm going to assume behind this cover is a set of points. And the way you would shut these off originally is you bend this detent and it grounds out this power wire to the coil and everything shuts down. What they've done is I'm assuming spliced in right here a kill switch up on the dash. And it grounds it out so you don't have to use this guy. But using that information of knowing what that is, I'm assuming behind here is the points like I mentioned. So, voila, points. Oh yeah, they nasty. Let me get some sandpaper, clean those up, and I'll try it again. I'll wipe them off a little bit. Sometimes the sandpaper leaves some crap in there. You gotta get that off too. Let's go ahead and stand this up and try it again. Hey, look at that. That's smart. And it looks strong. Hell yes. This is going great. Let's put this plug back in, get some juice in it, and see what happens. This is an updraft carburetor, which means A, I'm not going to be able to find parts within a week, if not a month. And B, I'm probably not going to need them. 
<laughs> because they always seem to still work. They're just really old. They don't have a lot going on. There's no plastic parts. Uh, they're well designed and they just lots of nice big orifices that don't get plugged up. So I bet this thing makes noise with very little effort. big vacuum leak somewhere I think or a head gasket that might be out too you never know but you can hear it starting to cough and sputter to life and it's getting the RPM into it and it's getting going let's do it again
we've got a vacuum leak somewhere or her idle is set really high because this thing idles at like two grand but bam it's alive it had to clear some shit out of its throat but once it did it's good to go i guess next step is we straighten out that bottom bar and get this thing bolted back into the cart i guess is what you would call this i, I don't the Vibo. So to fix that bar that's bent up, probably skid loader forks or something, I think I'm going to use this hijack and try to, you know, kind of get it in there and straighten that out. So... Perfect. Remember kids, let's with your back in a violent twisting and jerking motion. Okay, motor's bolted in. We went ahead and greased up the cable for the throttle. It appears to maybe be working. works up front and everything. Turns out the way this works is you literally just move this lever and it sets your throttle like to yay or nay. And then you move this for reverse and forward, which as you can see, moves the linkage back there when it flips back up. And then when you want to stop, <laughs> you tilt this down. So we actually already have gears, brakes, and throttle. All we need to do now is finish up some wiring so like the switches and everything work appropriately and then find a belt and get the tires to take air. That's I was gonna say, these don't look too, too happy. That's the big one right there. And a fuel tank. But then we'll have a running and driving Vibo. Whatever that means. Do you think it'll drive home? No. <laughs> We're not even gonna clickbait it that it would. <laughs> but we will probably take it home and drive it around. That sounds like fun, you wanna do that? <gasps> will this be our side-by-side -side on the property? <laughs> I mean, we already have a Cushman. So, let's go find ourselves a belt and some other parts and come back tomorrow and uh, see if we can get them all to fit, see what happens. Yeah. Alrighty, so it's been a week or more. I don't remember, I don't remember where we left off. I don't remember much about any of this. We've been moving into our new house and we're finally, well, moved into our new house. So that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. But now we're back with ye old friggin' Vibo mobile thing. I have gone down to the store and got ourselves a belt, not the belt, but, but a belt. It's about the right length, I think. I don't know, I measured some stuff with a piece of fuel line and went, eh, yeah, that'll probably maybe do. I've also got uh, some way overpriced tires. There's like 60 bucks a pop, not at the only store I can find them at right now. Hopefully we don't need those. Hopefully the old ones magically take air, but I doubt it. Let's go ahead and get this guy on and then deal with getting some wind in the tires. All right, so a touch of time has passed. I've got our belt in here. It might be a little short. We're gonna find out, that's for sure. Probably could've gone an inch or two longer. Um, all our clutches and everything have been moving this whole time up here, that's good. I got this one to open up so we can get our belt on, that's good. Had to loosen the motor, twist it, put the belt on, put it all back, pretty standard operation there. Next up, we need to get some air in these tires. So I'm gonna lift everything up with the floor jack, pop tires off one at a time. And then we need to get this starter solenoid, our voltage regulator, all of our switches, and most importantly, the steering wheel to work. Which, as you can see, nothing's, nothing's happening here, so that's the last big obstacle. Yeah, pretty sure this is just a golf cart someone cut up and built into a Vibo. And I'm pretty sure I can stick my entire hand inside this tire, so... You don't need to put a new one on that rim. That's gonna be fun to get off. Yeah, 
I can't get them to take a seal. I'm going to struggle with this for the next half hour. We'll be back. All right, I found my solution was to take these down to the tire shop next door and just have them deal with it because that was a whole lot easier. They have the tools to do it, unlike me. Either way, we've got two new tires on here for the back. Still need to find some for the front. I don't know where to do that. But once we do that, we'll finally have tires on this thing. Actually, I might know where there are some. Sorry, Phoenix. By the way, don't worry, this is coming back for a glorious part two. We just need a little time to finish everything. We're both very busy right now. Phoenix with all of his powder coating stuff because of a job this video picked up and me because we moved. Hopefully later this week we get some work done and have this out in the next few weeks. Keep an eye out. Death Trap Golf Cart Part Dose. There we go. Thanks to Phoenix, not that he knows, the Vibo finally has four inflated tires on it. Next up, I'm going to clean out our gas tank, get that thing hooked up, and make sure our back axle is working properly. Alright, so I have our tank off. Um, this is clearly off of something somewhere. It says tractor on it, so probably a lawnmower. I have no idea. Just held on to plumber's tape. Pretty easy to get off. I'm going to flush it out with some liquid gold, get all that loose rust out of it, get a new line hooked up, and put it back on. I had to pop the petcock off and run a drill bit through it, clean it up with some brake clean and whatnot. But she's moving and, surprisingly so far, not leaking. So let's get some fuel in this thing, see if it fuels our carburetor, see if the engine still runs, and see if it will spin the rear tires. All right, drastically oversized car battery, because that's all I have, is now installed. It is time to see if this thing will spin. I don't see the amp meter move at all. Our headlight knob still doesn't move. Do we do anything when we hit start? Ooh, I hear a solenoid. I don't know why she's not spinning though. Must be rusty contacts. Let's play with it, see if we can get the spin. All right, let's see if we're getting voltage on the back side of that solenoid. We are indeed. Are we getting voltage on the starter post of the starter. Okay, well now that's interesting. You can see it's just turning on. So, what we have is either a bad connection somewhere, or not enough amperage that the motor is just absorbing it, or the motor seized. Well, it ain't that one. I'll play around and see what I can find. All right, yeah, well, that would do it too. The battery was dead. <laughs> Cleaned up the terminals and everything, and nothing changed. So I thought, you know what, wait a minute. I don't remember where I had that last. Let's throw the charger on it. Sure enough, she's flat. So uh, let that charge up and try it again. Nothing. I know you want to. You can do it. Can we crank any faster though in the one minute the charger's been on? We do, we do indeed, and the ignition works. Hell yeah, will she start? Holy shit, no freaking way. <laughs> I didn't even notice. One of the lights started working during that. What about you? Oh, no, come back. Come back to me. I think I just killed him. <laughs> the boat is 39 feet 6 inches overall and is fitted with two crane motors of 500 total horsepower capable of turning 1,000 revolutions a minute. She you guys haven't heard of this. This is the uh, Dorkomotive podcast that you can get on Spotify or anywhere else you get podcasts. This is by Brian Loans, the guy from Bang Shift and, you know, the NHRA announcer. I have been listening to a ton of these recently while uh, working on the new house and while working on this all day. It's a lot of cool stuff in here, like the deadly explosive history of headlights, acetylene headlights from the early 1900s, the 1,000 ton sucker punch, the history of World War I Q ships, staged train wrecks, the board race tracks back in the day. A lot of cool old history and Brian puts a ton, I mean a 
ton of effort in the research for these podcasts. So yeah, definitely check these out. Brian Lone's Dorkomotive Podcast on Spotify and probably anywhere else you get podcasts. In the meantime, we've got this dang old light bulb that doesn't want to do light bulb things. Come on, I believe in you. There's life left in you. Maybe. I, I really can't tell. <laughs> well, you know what? One's good enough. Alright, a little bit of destruction later. We've got ourselves. Any moment now. We have ourselves, I said. God damn it, give it to me. Yeah, dang it. Come here, you saw it again. Ah, there we go. A C steering box. As you can see, she's cracked all the way up and down in two spots. So I'm gonna assume it got full of water. And this shaft is probably seized right here. Let's take it over to the bench and see what we can find out. All right, it's a bit loud because the heat's on, but that's a necessity because it's like negative a billion outside. Actually, I don't think it's that bad today. I think it's like 10. We got the bolts out of this. Let's go ahead and pop it open. Okay, <laughs> it need this. Let's go ahead and pop it open. Whoop. Oh yeah, that'll uh, that'll do that. Just one big solid hunk of rust. Looks like we got a screw gear with uh, two followers, probably a bearing on each end with seals. And the followers run up and down the screw and move our pitman arm. I'm gonna guess I can hammer this follower out. I could be totally wrong, but we're gonna find out. I've never had a steering box apart before. Let's figure it out. After hammering the shaft through, I've attempted to take the nut back off, which as you can tell, ain't going the hottest as far as taking the nut off, but things are spinning, both in this direction and the other. They're grindy, they're unhappy, but they're spinning. Definitely can't do it by hand, so I need to take this out, clean up this bore, clean up the shaft, maybe likewise with these, you know, get a nice uh, supportive hose clamp right here to hold this crack that goes all the way from one end to the other. Hold that in place. And then we'll be good to go ahead and oil everything up and put it back together. However, I can't get this nut off, so I'm gonna have to get creative and hold this dang thing still. Let's see if a pair of permanent pliers will do it. Okay, here we go. There we go. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit mushroomed. I'm sure that'll be okay. Alrighty, got our bore cleaned up. Got our shaft cleaned up. And with a little bit of effort, hey, there we go. We should have, yes, a working steering box. All right, that's pretty much the last step, I think. Let's throw some grease inside this, and we'll uh, put it back in. Just to show I'm a man of my word, there we go. Everything's greased up, good to go in there. Moving smooth as hell. What I like to see. And of course, our structural hose clamp is in place. It actually did a way better job than I anticipated of closing up that gap in the uh, cast aluminum housing. So yeah, we'll get that cover back on. Not worried about a gasket. There should be a gasket here, but clearly not gonna do anything on this exact assembly. So uh, yeah, let's get this sucker installed. Alright, it is now the next morning. We're back with both the Vivo and the horrible lighting because the sun's coming up. As you can see, I have our steering wheel in and we have the ability to turn, which is the last piece of the puzzle. I also put on an inline fuel filter and a fuel shut off. So now our battery's charged up, throttle moves, brakes moves, steering wheel moves, belts on, everything should be good to go. Let's go ahead give this thing some gas and see what it does. See if it'll finally spin those tires. For the first time in probably 30 years, I don't know, maybe closer to 20, the engine did spin over. I, I have no idea. It sat outside, so it's hard to tell. Let's give her hell.
All right, well, at this point, the previously running and properly operating Vibo has moved to what I call miracle status, where it's gonna take a freaking miracle for me to get this damn thing to run now. The electrical is wonky as hell and only cranks when it wants to for a few seconds and then dies out, even off the booster pack, which is kind of showing me I might have a bad ground, but it takes like unreasonably large amounts of contact on the ground to even spin. I've lost spark, I've sanded the points, I got nothing, I've removed the cutoff wire. Ugh, just one thing after another. So, I was hoping to have this whole video done by now. I'm going to keep playing on this and I'll let you know if we get anywhere. Hopefully we do, I still want to, you know, drive this thing around. It's been all this work for nothing, it's not going to fly. Alright, a little time has passed and I've been fortunate enough to figure out everything and I can now fix it. I had to sand the points and redo that wire that went into the bottom where that little touch ground was. Forgot about that guy. Uh, the blue wire is spliced in so I can hook up the kill switch. And remember how I said it needed so much ground to crank? If I connect it to the engine block, only half the time it cranks. But if I connect it to the starter, it hauls ass every time. So that starter isn't grounding to the block very well, which probably isn't grounding to the rusty frame very well, which isn't grounding the best to that cable. So I'll clean up some contacts between those. Otherwise, I'll find some new cable to just run to that starter and that battery will work. Let's give it all a try. I got a cable going from the starter to a random place on the body for ground. We've got our kill switch all hooked up, spark plugs back in. Uh, Resoldered the positive lead to the starter motor. Everything should be good. Fuel's on. Let's see if this thing starts. I already primed it. It should just light right off. Finally, this thing runs. Okay, and the belt, belt seems to work like pretty well. It's opening the clutches just about right, I think. I don't know, we'll see. Eh, it's actually probably way too small. Whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as it moves around the yard, that's all I want. I need to put this points cover back on, and then get this thing on the trailer. We'll take it to the new house and go rip around the yard. Let's do it. What's up, Mook? Vibin', Vibin with the Vibo. Vibin' with the Vibo. <laughs> Weebus. So, we got this sucker home. I have made a seat out of a board I found in the shed. Uh, this fell off, so we turned it around so that I don't get stabbed, because that doesn't look very fun. Yeah, Kevin's just a non-believer. And getting stabbed, this is true, <laughs> I will admit that. It's time to go for a ride. Basically, the best way to do this, I've found, is pray. push down to put it in gear, okay. and then flip this down is off. That's how you stop, is you just turn the engine off. You uh. do have a brake. I don't, you gotta push on the bottom of it. Down here? Yeah. <gasps> brake. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't move! <laughs> 
and then you just kind of have at her. Oh, goodbye. It's probably best if she doesn't find the throttle. It is Mook after all. Uh oh. Ah, oh, I killed it! <laughs> At least I found it, I killed it! That was the best case scenario right there, that's what that was. Yeah, it still kind of runs like crap with all the rust in the lines and shit, but you'll have them. You'll have them. Fire back up. I don't have back. the clutch right there. <laughs> Alright, here's some throttle. A lot of trees out here. When I put the ground on the starter motor, I forgot to, you know, set the belt tension again. So that's fun. This thing isn't as pathetic as it looks. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I'm breaking the seat every time I move, so that's really good for my self-esteem. <laughs> hey, guess God, what I did today? What? I broke a Vivo. <laughs> Here, hold this. Again. Again. <laughs> All right, hit the start button. Ready? Yep. Ugh. Are you still hitting it? No. Oh. You freaked out, so I stopped. Ready? Yep. Oh, okay. A little bit of danger. Yeah. Here, let me give you a boost. Go ahead. There it goes. Ugh, this thing's such a pile of shit. <laughs> it's for sale, who wants it? It's probably a little cold dog, not gonna lie. Alright, try that. Alright, get out of here, Hecker. It really needs different tires. Or scraps, whichever. <laughs> Oh, she is giving it now. The problem is you sit in front of the front axle, so there's no weight on the rear. So it runs out of fuel because it's all clogged up. You want to drive it? Yeah, I would like to. Then we can finally be done with this Before damn thing. I, completely break I didn't break that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I figured out a method now. Right as it's spooling up, you shove it in gear. Oh, fancy. Or just get a longer belt. But you know, what fun is that? None.
on? What? Where'd the belt go? It snapped. It snapped? It's in a thousand pieces. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. That is the revival of the Vibo, whatever the hell this thing is. Basically a mutilated golf cart that was reassembled in a manner that makes it less good at what it does, but now it looks like a dump cart and it was built with a stick welder. Mook had some fun riding around. I apparently was not allowed after all of my blood, sweat, and tears to ride it around. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's not our regular content at all since we just moved into our new house. By the way, welcome to the new property. You've seen the backyard, and here's the extended backyard. So we've got more than just a little ground to go play on now. Lots of four-wheeler and three-wheeler trails out there and plenty of room to have fun, to include this bean field, AKA racetrack, if you ask me. Of course, I should say, none of this would have ever been possible without all of your guys' support. So we're gonna do as much as we can to have as many new flavors and styles of content on this property. It's going to enable us to have a ton of events and all sorts of stuff. So keep an eye out for all those. They will be fun, I can promise you that. There's something to do with uh, Pontiac Grand Prix and uh, paint guns and it, it's all in the works. Just, just you wait. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to Junkyard Mook. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment below. Check out all of our friends here on YouTube. We'll see you next week for another fuller, more endearing episode of Junkyard Digs. It's gonna be better because there won't be a Vibo in it. Yeah. We'll see you guys then. Peace. War! <laughs> Wait, what the hell do we do with this now? We don't have a skid loader or tractor or anything to move it. There's a burn pile right there. I like your thinking. <laughs>